What is up guys, this is Vendor and we're going to look again at some tournament replays and today we're going to look at Bellroyce and Dabuda and we'll also look at uh, me and Surav from uh, round 2 so, so we've got some good battles lined up and again, stage 1, we are on Alpine Ridge It was a warm summer's day, <laughs> I'm just joking So Bellroyce of course was our, um, what is it, finalist from the BBB, but um, I'm refraining from using the word unfortunately, um, as he did just lose, not unfortunately, he did lose against Armaterasu, but that was an excellent uh, final kind of battle, and hopefully we can replicate it again this time round, and Buddha, um, he, I think he was a subscriber to this channel, but um, yeah, I'm still yet to play you, Debuda. Still yet to play you. So he's going to be playing as the Shimzu, Debuda is. And then um, he's got some Bow Warrior Monks. He's got some Matchlock Samurai, so a nice skirmish component. He's then got some Nodachis up front with uh, Shimazu Yoshihiro. And then he's also got uh, Tetsubi Warrior Monks, which is always nice to see. And then he's got some actual Naginata Warrior Monks behind that. That's a strong army to bring. Then he's got some, uh, some Yarika, some Great Guard. And then he's also got some normal Great Guard, more Yari Cav, and more Yari Cav. So that's three Yari Cav and a total of two Great Guard Cav. Now, uh, yeah, Bellroy's brought an interesting army. The Mori are interesting because they don't have a specialism, which is nice. It can play in your favour. I mean, some people think that, um, you know, Shidoni players either, I don't know, the Hojo because they're useless, because, you know, siege weapons, that's their... That's their thing, if you like. That's their thing. But, you know, no one uses artillery. And um, the Mori don't have a uh, specialism. So, most people think you should kind of do any, any sort of classic tournaments with those two factions. But I like the idea of um, having a lot of diversity with other factions. And, you know, this can play into your favour. Because playing as the Shimizu, people and no, people know that you are going to be bringing some Katani units. Not necessarily, but, you know, as uh, in the case of the Buddha. But, you know, it's always a possibility, pretty much. You, you roughly know what kind of army they're going to be bringing. Alternatively, if it's Odder, you... Yeah, I think, I think that by this point, we all know if someone's playing Odder, we know exactly what they're bringing. So, the Mori, you don't really know... You don't have any idea, so you can't quite prepare for anything. But um, Bellroyce has bought some Matchlock Samurai, uh, some more Matchlock Samurai... Uh, Great Guard, Yari Cav, um, Light Cav, Light Cav, two Bow Cav, a Great Guard, and another Yari Cav. So that's a very strong cavalry component. It's got some uh, Yari Ashigaru, more Yari Ashigaru in the centre, more Yari Ashigaru there, and that's pretty much it. And then he's got his general, and he does also have uh, Wacko Raiders um, lined up on this ridge here. Oh my god. So let, let's just put it into fast forward a little bit try and get it. I hope you enjoyed the first um, first video. Of course, I'm doing two battles per video, so you know, it's just a lot easier, I think, this way. So here we go. He's revealed all of his units. These guys have got three armor, so he doesn't want to get caught by these bow monks. But he's ranked them all up to about, what's that, five chevrons? So they got some insane stats there, and they are sword units, so um, Tabuda's going to have to be very, very careful when playing against these guys um, as they're pretty much anti-infantry. And um, this would be a good move by Debuddy. He's going to get the charge off here, it looks like. Uh, no, not not quite. But, you know, so we're going into our first combat, and these bow cav are not going to be helping matters for Debuddy. But um, Debuddy has got some Yari Cav, Yari Cav, and Yari Cav. And it looks like they've just made it into their first rank, is that? And they, he's going to be pulling them out, which is a smart move. Um, the Great Guard and the Yari Cav have. They both dealt with a lot of pain. And he's left his Great Guard in, which is kind of good, because that means Beryl is going to be charging off. And then these. Uh, these great guard can come in and support, but um, of course Bellroyce, um, he shouldn't have charged him because now he's just been baited, and um, he's he's kind of having to pull back his bow cav here, and uh, but he's going to pull up his matchlocks, which is a nice idea, and um, yeah, I mean Debuda's not quite going to be falling for it, but he's got a very very strong contingent of uh, cavalry on this flank. He's going to have to use these guys pretty smartly. I split them up so I'd have two cav here and have. Three cav over here. Try, oh no, sorry, one cav there. Three cav over here, and um, try and split the Buddha's forces up a little bit because you can't approach from the centre because these matchlocks will tear you up. These uh, bow monks are going to be doing pretty well, and these matchlock samurai are doing very well as well um, in terms of their positioning. And these bow monks have already got 30 kills, so they're going to be reducing this unit down. Bellroyce should be taking these guys back because you know they've only got that three armor. They're going to get chopped down pretty. 
tea easily. And, um, you know, De Buddha's done an excellent job. He's hidden this one cavalry unit in the forest. Again, spitting your cavalry up. This is what we like. Um, it forces your opponent to think about several things um, on the battlefield at once. But Umberos is going to be able to counter this with a matchlock uh, samurai, which means he's going to have to take his cavalry right on the back. But you have to remember the Buddha cannot get caught by these bow cav because they'll be tearing into these cavalry units over here. Um, I mean, they've got some good, some good armor, some fairly solid armor, but you know, it's still going to be pretty vulnerable against uh, any sort of skirmishing force. So uh, I think uh, the Buddha has kind of changed targets. So he's got 70 kills now, so he is definitely raking in the kills with those bow monks. And um, these guys decided to come in, in their pajamas. They woke up a little bit late, so I think we should ease off them a little bit. And um, Beros has brought up his matchlock samurai to take some pot shots at uh, De Buddha. So it looks like it may have a matchlock battle any second. But um, with any gun units, they need line of sight, direct line of sight, that is. So these units down here, unfortunately, I said the word. Damn. Anyway, these units down here won't quite get to shoot at the matchlock samurai up here. But um, I couldn't really see that being any sort of uh, disadvantage. But this is definitely kind of a bad move on a. Uh, on Barros's part, he doesn't quite want to be doing this. These Yari Cav are going to be intercepting, which is a very good move by De Buddha because what that does is that that traps um, the cavalry, and um, it means that the matchlocks <laughs> the matchlocks can have some free shots. But De Buddha needs to put these guys into their second ranking fire. That's one thing I would say would be a good idea. And he pulls away his Yari Cav at a perfect time, and I think these guys will be able to shoot. Will they shoot? And. No, they won't, but that would have been a great micro micro move um, if he did manage to pull them off just. And these, uh, these Ashigara are quite out of position, I think, trying to charge into these Yari Cav over here, trying to support those Light Cav, but it's not working for him. And he gets a nice little volley off there, but he does need to pull these guys up so they can get a full volley. Now we get the full charge. So now Barois is going to be charging. He's had enough faffing around, and... Um, we're going to get some matchlock shots off here. The bow cav is going to try and pick away, but uh, you have to remember the Buddha has got some cavalry hidden in the forest over here. Um, just waiting to pounce on these bow cav. And Beryl should be taking his general up a little bit to support these troops. Um, it'll be an interesting fight between these two. I mean, the stats say that Nodachis should lose in the long term, but... Uh, no, 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 they should be winning from the charge, but then the Wacko Raiders should be winning in the long term from that sustained combat. And, um, you know, this is perfect um, kind of positioning here. And also rally by De Buddha as what that means is that the Nodachi, they've got Banzai, they've got, um, you know, the rally on. So their, their stats have jumped up from about, what, 14 to 20. 14 to 20 in one match, which is incredible. On the flank... Um, Beros is going to be picked apart by some um, some great guard and some Yari Cav that's going to be teasing him. He's going to be charging some Yari Ashigaru for some support. These units are still, only half of them are firing. They need to get up here um, on this bank to start shooting at these matchlock Ashigaru. No, Samurai. And these uh, Wacker Raiders seem to be losing to the Monks. And I'm not sure if the Monks are quite going to be doing a, uh, a war cry anytime soon. But uh, as I said, he does charge, De Buddha does charge in these uh, Cav... <laughs> Yari Cavalry to the Yari Ashigaru. There's so many different words, guys. And then um, the Matchlock Samurai is going to be picking away at these monks, it looks like. Um, I think he might even be trying to go for his general, but I think that'd be a bit ambitious, let's, let's be honest. And um, yeah, it looks like the Buddha is going to be uh, routing the general. Is he going to be? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> these guys just got straight back on their horse and they're hightailing it. Um, the monk there getting a nice little kill on the bodyguard. And these guys are finally going to be shooting, but I think. That's because uh, De Buddha's repositioning, so he might want to be careful about the way he does that. And um, the best bit is that uh, Belrois has managed to win this flank over here against the Great Guard and the Yari Cav. I think it's because De Buddha didn't quite micro this uh, Great Guard, because when we were last over here, the Great Guard was sort of sitting around not doing much. So, I mean, you know, either team could win at this point, but um, really what Belrois has got to do is got to regroup and then uh, go balls deep pretty much, just all in one go. Because the Buddha is spread fairly thin, um, I think he's only got, yeah, I mean, he's only got his general here, and then he's also got um, some skirmish troops. So what would be a fantastic idea would be to charge in this bow cav unit, straight in at uh, the general, just for a good knock-on effect. Charging these Ash Ashigaru just for a bit of support against these great guard, and um, continue firing with these matchlocks into these matchlocks. 
That would be a nice idea, but he is going to get a nice charge off with some great gardens from Yarigav. Okay, or he might just sit there. No, he's actually going to go for it. So it's a great move here. He just gets absolutely washed away here. Does uh, the Buddha's general. He gets absolutely smashed. And these great guard aren't quite going to be retaliating in enough time. But um, as I said, really Beryl has got to regroup all of the all of his units he has to go in as a whole army, not just going in a little bit piecemeal, which is kind of what he's doing at the moment. And these Ashigara are going to be caught out of their spear wall, and they will get wiped up by these monks and no Dachis. So the Yari Cav is going to get minced up by the other enemy Yari Cav, and um, also the Great Guard Cav. I didn't realize he had that. And um, these Mastrock Samurai are just going to be picking away here um, at any units that come in their way, but these Yari Cav are going to be charging straight into them. And they're going to be blocking any firing, which is going to be pretty good. And um, it looks like it looks like Bell Royce actually had a katana cav as well. I completely forgot about that. And um, by the looks of it, so did he. He also forgot he had that. And these bow cav are going to be firing into uh, the backs of their own men. But um, I think it's all in good cause trying to get um, Shimizu Yoshihiro. I think that's who they're really trying to target there. And these guys should go into the... You know, these Bokav should really be popped straight into their, um, their melee mode and just hitting straight into these Nodachi, straight into these Monks. And um, even these Yarikav, they probably win against. So that's really what he should be doing at this point because, uh, you know, these units still probably could win him the game because Shogun 2 is, is very unpredictable. <laughs> Let's just say Shogun 2 is pretty unpredictable and he can't be firing into this forest either. But, um, you know, De Buddha's done a great job holding out. He's managed to go around as a full squad. I think he's going to be trying to somehow box himself in. Because these Yari, these Katana Cav are going to do a lot of damage against any sort of unit which isn't protected by any spears. And he hasn't got a lot of spears left, suffice to say. And I think these match socks really should be just trying to pick away here. Um, and then he should charge in all of his units. But these Bokav are going to charge into this Yari Cav. They're going to get a nice load of kills, but I think the Yarikav, nope, the Yarikav just about manages to route, and I think that Belroys actually managed to route his own Yarikav, no sorry, his own Bokav, and these Katana Cavalry over here are going to be engaged into these um, Tetsubi Warrior Monks, he should be pulling these guys out and then charging them back in, but again, unfortunately for Belroys, he doesn't quite manage to pull it off, it was a great match, um, you know, it's not a very stereotypical Shogun match, but it was a very, very nice match to see. Um, it seemed a little bit different, especially with those Wacko Raiders. Um, some good skirmishing components and some very nice calves. So I hope you've enjoyed, and we'll go to results. And here we are into the results screen. So you can see Debutter did bring a lot less men than Belroyce. Again, Belroyce really had to kind of use... I mean, if you're going to be bringing a very big army, and you're going to be fighting against an army which is, you know... In terms of stats, a lot better than yours. You have to use the whole of your army um, at one point. Really, you have to do quite technically go balls deep, if that could be a technical phrase to uh, kind of say. But as I was saying, you know, you really had to kind of get in, get the wrap around. He had to um, just attack as one whole unit, try and overwhelm Debutta from several angles, and then he would have stood a very good chance of winning. Because as you can see there, he did bring an extra 500 more men. Um, but you know, it's just a few errors. But overall, it was a very good battle. And but um, just about killing uh, more than he deployed, which is always a nice stat to have. And his bow warrior monks did very well. I think that really did help him out a lot um, in the grind out engagement with those wacker raiders. Um, those bow monks managed to chop down those wacker raiders, chop down the anti infantry force. And um, yeah, other units did well. Warrior monks, Yarikav, great guard, of course, doing very well. And um, there's no doubt she didn't quite do as well as I thought they would, but you know they still get just under 100 kills, which is always nice. And the Tetsubu Warrior Monks getting a good 52 kills, they're very solid, um, ending by them. And the Wacker Raiders getting 141 kills, Matchlock Samurai raking in a good 100 kills there. And um, even the Bokav did pretty well, but I think one of his other Bokav were down here at the bottom. 31 kills, not quite what you want to see, but you know overall, as I said, a good match. And the Katana Cav, of course, could have been used. Just a little bit more effectively. <laughs> just a bit, guys. Just a bit. So, we're going to our next battle. And um, it's going to be between me and Sorav. So, this... This... You know what, actually? I really did like this game. This was a good, solid match. Um, me and Sorav, we've been friends for a very long time now. I love Sorav. Um, talk to him on Skype. Play some battles with him on Skype. Great guy. Very, very friendly player. And... Um, I'm actually quite scared of him playing <laughs> playing on Shogun 2 as well. Um, 
you know, I, I always think I'm going to lose with lose whenever I'm against Sarav because he is a very good player and um, he was actually I think the first featured player on my channel as well so um, I think he was in probably my seventh or eighth uh, video so a lot of history between us two so it'll be interesting to see if we've got any schoolboy um, sort of rivalries going on okay so I've picked the Shimizu so it's a little bit different from what I bring but um, really I thought he could be playing Odder, but I think Sarav is a little bit too uh, honourable for that. And I didn't want to play anything horrible. I mean, I was thinking about going um, Hattori and possibly, maybe, I don't know, going in and just ninja bombing him and all this kind of wonderful stuff. And I'm just popping up, <laughs> literally just playing Hattori, setting my whole army up here. And then he spawn in just outright charge. But I thought, no, nah, that's a bit harsh. I want to give Sarav a good old fashioned, you know, hard match. Um, so that's what I did. So I bought... Some matchlock samurai up front, some uh, bow warrior monks. I've got two of those guys of each. Now I did this because Daizutsu Basin. Really, you want to stay in this channel. You don't really want to be running down and up in hills um, and flanking unless you have got cavalry. So you want to be staying on this hill. And um, you know, so it's a very channeled, it's a very tight um, kind of area to maneuver in. So you want to force them to play on your terms, as always. Um, even more prevalent than usual. So then I've got some two Yari Ashigari back backing up those. Uh, the skirmish troops. I was thinking he could play ninjas, but he doesn't play ninjas very often. As you can see here, I have got two ninja units. Um, but then for my melee force, I've got some. Uh, I got four katana samurai. So these guys have all got um, one chevron. So they've got 15 melee attack. I've got my general, who is a 300 koku general. Just want to point out there. Then I've got a Naginata Warrior Monks, two of those, and some Great Guard at the back. Now, the reason I had Great Guard, you won't actually see me use these guys too much. My initial plan was to just keep these guys out the back of my army, because I think I was talking about the other day, even if your cavalry isn't doing anything, even if it's just sitting there, it will deter people from actually attacking you from the rear with their cavalry, because, you know, no one's going to want to charge at your rear when you've got two Great Guard units, um, because, you know, they're going to sustain a lot of casualties, and I can easily pull in, I don't know, maybe a Naginata Warrior Monk from either flank. So really these guys were to scare him from um, not attacking from the you know rear, but I do use them quite effectively. So let's look over at Sarav. He's got a lovely formation. I've got a little bit of an obsessive compulsive disorder. Just just a little bit of OCD. So that's why my um that's why my formation is always, you know, pretty perfectly arranged. But, but I mean, sir, I've done a very, very good job. Um, you know, but, I mean, if I was setting up this army, I would have uh, freaked out at this match. Like, I should go completely out of position. What's he doing? Anyway, um, I'm just joking. So, um, he's got three bow warrior monks, so very, very skirmish heavy there. He's then got some match like Ashigari behind them. Again, needs to make sure those guys go into their kneel and kneel and fire, so they're fire by rank. He's then got Ashigaru, backed up by, I think that's six, five, four, five. Five Yuasegi warrior monks. Ouch, that's a... I mean, when I saw this army, I thought, oh god, this is going to be fun. This is a, this is going to be a tough match, because you have to remember, these guys have got Warcry, and they're Yuasegi, which means their melee attack stats are slightly higher. He's got some Yari Ashigaru protecting uh, his general. I'm not sure if it's Yuasegi Kenshin, but he, I think he has also got um, maybe two Yari Cav and a Great Guard? I, I can't remember. Yeah, I can't really remember quite what he's got. But, I mean, I'll take you through what my plan was. Basically, whenever I play against Surav, Surav normally goes uh, quite melee heavy. So, uh, when we first started playing, you know, when we first met, he played um, Nodachi. I remember there was one match we played um, on U Side Pass or something, and... Uh, he just destroyed me basically. I charged in all of my units, which were qualitatively excellent, perfect morale, leadership general, and um, I charged into his Nodachi and his monks. He war cried Banzai, bang, my, my army was off the field fleeing, which uh, was not great, and he's got a light cab there. So uh, I thought what I would do is that I'd take into this battle a lot of skirmishing troops. Now the reason I got the ninjas is not because I'm trying to fart ass around with them. These ninjas won me the battle. That is my analogy of this battle. These guys definitely won me it. Um, so yeah, I've kind of told you who won. Yeah, I, I, I won, but I want to tell you why I won. Because uh, these Kisha ninjas did play a pivotal role in the battle. But I mean, this is still an excellent, excellent battle. And um, I thoroughly recommend people actually do start playing more like this. None of this gun cav crap. Or, um, well, I say ninjas, but I did kind of bring ninjas. But none of this um, long yari. This is a good straight-up fight. And um, what I'm going to do, 
is that I did initially want to charge in these uh, these Kisho ninjas as he was charging me with, I don't know, Nodachi or Monks or Katanas. So charge in these guys, um, stop him from advancing, and then I was pretty much just going to shoot into the back of my own guys, my own ninjas with these Matchlock Samurai and these Bow Warrior Monks to try and get max effectiveness. So the main problem with playing against a rush army is that you can't quite get the effectiveness um, you know, of all your skirmish troops if you are playing against a rush army. It's very hard to actually get the um, the kind of performance um, to Koku, you know, sort of percentage or ratio, um, because you know they'll rush forward, you'll get a few volleys off, and then pretty much you'll just lose. You'll lose straight up because um, we spent all this money on this skirmish force, and um, well, they've just gone all out melee. So I wanted these guys to perform very well, so I brought the ninjas here just to charge in, stop a charge, and then uh, these guys just fire into the back, and it, pro it basically just prolongs my skirmishing phase, phase, fate, phase, phase. Phase, that's the right one. So I just wanted to prolong that phase in the battle. So I put up my great guard here just to put a bit of pressure on his flank. I do decide to take them from the rear um, because I don't... I think he hasn't got any cav. I tried to count up and um, it's pretty... I mean, it's pretty hard to tell whether he has got any cav. I think it was a, a 10,000 Koku battle. I can't really remember, or 14,000. But, um, you know, I mean, these bow monks, they cost about 3,600 each. No, not each, but all together. These are... Uh, Matchlock Ashigaru about 400, so that brings his total to about, I don't know, 4,000, 4,000 Koku, 4,400. And then we've got some monks, of course, he's got five of those, so that's about, what, 3,000. No, sorry, it's about, yeah, it's about 4,000, I think, down the drain, 5,000 down the drain. So, I thought he wouldn't have any more calves, so this is why I do pull up my Great Guard. And um, at the moment, we're at a stalemate, because... I was expecting he'd go very melee heavy. He didn't quite go as melee heavy as I thought he would. Um, he actually brought a lot of skirmish. So I was sat here thinking, how the hell do I break into this impregnable fortress? Just, this is going to be pretty hard. So, um, as you can see here, I am thinking. And um, light bulb switches on Vendetta's head. And I think, you know what? F it. I'm just going to, I'm just going to do an all out charge. So I charge up my Kisho Ninja. Um, I take those guys straight in. I'm not sure if they've got their uh, their swords on. I'm not sure if they're into melee. Um, but they could be doing their ninja bombs. I'm not entirely sure. I think they do, actually. Oh, yes, that is it. I remember now. They do do the ninja bombs. Um, and he does begin to fire at me. He does very well. He starts to target my great guard, which is a beautiful move. I Has, have to commend Sura for that. And there you go. And you'll notice that they're also blinding grenades. Now, there's a big reason why I did blinding grenades. Blinding grenades impair... I think it says here actually. Um, where is it? Blinding grenades. Uh, let's go to the second one. This unit is using blinding grenades to disorientate uh, the enemy, affecting their speed, combat ability, and missile accuracy. Now, you have to remember that he did bring a kind of skirmishy type army, so these guys are going to be insanely inaccurate. Um, you know, these guys have only got six kills from that volley. And. This just means that I've immediately got the advantage in terms of skirmishing power. So now I just put on, I think it was my uh, the whirling windy whatever arrows. I can't even remember what they're called. Um, so I'm going to begin to fire into him, further demoralizing him and uh, affecting his combat ability. And again, I'm going to be firing into the backs of my men. And I see an opening. I see that these units over here are isolated. These are... Uh, these Naginatas are going to be pulled in and these Yarashigaru. So I do a nice little charge here with my Great Guard. Straight into these Bowari Monks. Straight into um, some of the Yarashigaru. But um, it's a really good move, I think. And as you can see, his Bow Monks, that was really what I was aiming for. Because, again, this is going to force him to play on my terms and on Daisutsu Basin. This is what we love. And I'm going to be getting some nice two rank volleys off here. Um, I, I've always thought that looked a bit weird when they're doing the whole match lock and they're trying to shove the ball a little bit further down the muzzle. Yeah, it looks a little bit dodgy if you ask me. But his match lock's going to be opening up into me, finally. And, um, you know, his guys are suffering from that whistling arrows effect. Um, and I'm going to be putting in some uh, fire arrows. But notice as well how I'm not firing into his, uh, into his skirmish force. I'm actually firing into his monks. These guys have got two armor. And pretty much what I'm trying to do is take down his... Uh, his melee force, because if I can take down his melee force, then um, it's going to be far, far easier for mine to uh, cut him up. And, you know, these matchlocks are getting some lovely volleys off here. 120 kills, which is lovely. It's something which you want. Unfortunately, this guy couldn't quite replicate that. Only 18 kills. And I'm going to be doing a full-on charge here, straight into all of his uh, units. 
and um, we'll pursue into a grind out match. I then switch targets because I don't want to get any uh, friendly fire um, shots off on my own uh, Katana Samurai, so I s switch targets straight into his general, his general seems to be having this back turned. He's already rallied, at which point I need to pull my general straight up and to rally. He has cavalry coming in on my flank, two great guards, so I'm going to need to take up some uh, some spears, so I charge in my general behind, and then I think I do push these uh, Yarish guys slightly just to protect my general. I do a rally, I do an inspire, I think I then go into stand and fight, which I do, and um, I think his general gets into standard fight at this point. Yes, he does. And um, I think he actually ignores my my bow monks here. I think he does. And I'm going to charge forward my Ashigaru straight in to try and um, protect my general from any great guard charge, which is going to be a great move because that means that his great guard won't be effective. And we're still having a bit of a grind out match. It's a bit unclear who's going to win at this point. Um, I think I'm not sure if these monks have quite done their war cry just yet. I've certainly done my war cry as I've charged in my monks on the flank. Um, I'm not sure why my monks have got more, oh it's because they've got rally, that's why they've got more attack. Um, it's just scaling there to 19, 18. Um, I'm still holding out his great guard and this was a very big moment in the battle. Um, just as a big opening, big gap and I shoot my matchlock samurai straight through to Surav's general, knocking him out clean and then the bow war monks also getting some nice kills there. I think he does eventually break through my great, no sorry, my, uh, my Ashigaru, but uh, unfortunately for him it's a little bit too late as I have kind of won this flank. These monks are going to be uh, retreating. Yeah, the Ashigaru and monks are going to be treating. And um, <clears throat> yeah, and I do pretty much just about manage to pull it out, so that was an exceptional match. I did thoroughly enjoy it. GG to... Um, to Sarav and well played as well. That was a very, very good match. And these match like Ashigaru are going to be retreating. Yeah, that was a. This is possibly my favourite tournament battle I've played. And uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. So here we are at the results screen. As you can see, we brought two massive armies, 2,500 men pretty much. And um, he did lose about 600 more men than me. But we'll go into the unit stats to see who did well and who did not. The three Katana Samurai raking in the kills there at the top into that grind out match. Even the Nagnata Warrior Monks getting over 170 kills, which is all nice to see. Matchlock Samurai. I, lo I just love seeing skirmish units, which actually get a lot of kills. <laughs> I just love it. Um, you know, these guys got a heck of a lot of kills. 172, which is always. No, sorry, 138, which is very nice to see. Um, you know, even the Kisho Ninja did very well. Great guard. Um, I think all of my units overall did very well. I think that's what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight units I count, which got over 100 kills, which is very, very good. It's what you want. Um, and my general only getting six kills there. But um, Yosegi Monk's doing very well, holding out there. And even as Yari Ashigaru got 124 kills, I'm not quite sure what managed to kill them. Maybe it was the uh, yeah, maybe it was the Katana Samurais, which just fell to them. But um, Generally, that was a very, very good match. I did thoroughly enjoy it. Um, I just would like to point out as well that my ninjas... Now, the reason I said they won the match was because I think they managed to do about a good three or four good things. And that's that they uh, they stopped his skirmish force from firing at my skirmish force. They used the blinding grenades, which meant that when my ninjas were neutralized, when the threat was gone, um, his skirmish force was nowhere near as effective. And also that they actually managed to clean house a little bit and they actually forced Surav to get out of position and pull in his monks to support his front line. Um, but also they managed to rake up a, f you know, a good amount of kills as we saw there. Um, uh, Kishin Ninja getting 128 kills and the other one getting 70 kills. So even then they still did exceptionally well. And 